Yo, what's up guys? Welcome to day number five of Necropolis Teasers. And because this one is a juicy one and there's a lot to talk about, let's directly get into it. So I think the most noteworthy thing is right over here. The Ashling reward of remove a random modifier, replacing it with the veiled modifier instead, has been moved to the function of the veiled chaos orb and has been removed from safe houses. Veiled Chaos Orbs will now exclusively drop from Katarina, the leader of the Immortal Syndicate. So, in my own words, I would say the itemized the Betrayal Ashlyn Craft reward. Instead of having Tier 4 Ashlyn directly give you a bench after you killed the Mastermind, they put this functionality onto the Veiled Orb, which is now only called Veiled Orb and not Veiled Chaos Orb anymore. And instead of being able to target it from Tier 4 Aisling, it now has some chance to drop from Katarina. We don't know exactly what chance it is. Now of course the obvious great takeaway here is that we'll be able to trade these in game now instead of trading the crafting benches as a service on certain trade forums or chats right. But instead of simply adding this functionality to a new currency item they replaced the old Veiled Chaos Orb, and this is a huge change for crafting, because locking prefixes or suffixes and throwing a Veiled Chaos Orb on is now not something that you can do anymore. The old Veiled Chaos Orb was also huge for spamming simple Veiled Mod Unveils to catch up on a late start, or if you're still missing them when you're rich. I'd really say this change depends heavily on the drop rate. It's probably okay if it's at least one out of four Katarinas, but if it's any less than that, it will be super frustrating for SSF, even though it's a net positive change in trade. They also moved the Jorgen research craft of turn a rare amulet into a talisman out of the betrayal rewards and into bestiary. The craft that upgrades an amulet to a talisman has instead been moved to bestiary league. Since the captured monsters in bestiary can be traded, you can now trade for the amulet craft at your leisure. So same here, it's obviously great to be able to trade it, but not being able to target it anymore, even though it's far less useful than the Ashling craft was. But it's completely unclear in this case how to gain it. It's a small chance that it will still be Jorgen and Research, but it might be actually capturing a monster with Einhar missions, or even a Harvest Beast, or even a Harvest Beast from the Einhar memory. Without getting more context on this one, this could be a huge nerf, because, because you can't target the team of the talisman like you previously could with the rank of the Jorgen in your betrayal research. So now you have a much bigger pool of outcomes with the different talisman bases. So I actually believe this could be a hint at a talisman base rework or rebalance. Otherwise I personally can't see this craft being useful at all. So the last one of the three betrayal reward changes is the flask quality craft which has been removed from research hillock. Capability to add higher than 20% quality to weapons, armors, and flasks has been removed from Betrayal, and these reward outcomes have been replaced. Your flasks can now be corrupted by Val Orbs, which will add a random quality value from minus 10 to plus 10. Good luck! So you can't get above 20% quality on an uncorrupted flask anymore. And obviously previously you weren't even able to corrupt flasks, but you were able to get their quality above 20% with Hillock and Research. And now you can corrupt flasks for minus 10 to plus 10 quality. This adds a somewhat gambly layer to min-maxing your flask setup in endgame and I'm not quite sure whether I like that yet. But what's more interesting than this change itself is the change to single element resist flasks that's shown in the video here. Because these flasks have a new implicit or should I rather say an old implicit that's back and that's the plus five maximum single element resistance instead of 20% less damage taken of a single element. Now, numerically speaking, when you're at 75% fire, cold and lightning resist, getting plus five maximum resist to one of those resistances is the same as 20% less damage taken. But if you have a higher resistance, plus five percent is a bigger less multiplier than 20%. However, maximum resistances are always capped at 90% 
90% and a lot of builds previously went to 90% and used the 20% less damage taken on flasks, scaling it with a mage blood and enchanted orbs or with the pathfinder ascendancy and flask effect in the ranger area. And for those builds, this is a massive nerf because now of course, single element resist flasks are useless if you already have 90% resists. However, in general situations, these are often much better than before. Now, of course, you're already saying, Catmaster, you just skipped over the beginning. That It says Masters and Betrayal, and you only talked about Betrayal so far. Yeah, but guys, another big quality of life is that in 3.24, the Masters, they're not excluding each other anymore and can all appear in the same map. I wonder whether we will be able to put more than one from the map device, whether we'll just be able to click all four. But yeah, this should make Master Farming a lot more attractive and a lot more fun. And I hope it doesn't take away from other things in your maps, right? And I hope it doesn't occupy like a spawn position where another leak mechanic or a pack of monsters could have spawned. But yeah, all in all, some pretty good changes. A juicy day today. I personally like that you'll be able to save up those crafts that you get from Betrayal and trade them or use them at a time that is convenient to you rather than feeling that, oh, I got this Ashlyn ready. I need to have an item that I'm going to use on that crafting bench or I need to find a buyer for the bench. And that usually let me personally to run my betrayal very inefficiently because I kept safe houses up for longer than necessary without resetting them. So this should take off some friction and add some much needed quality of life. Some good changes Overall, the Veiled Chaos Orb will be sorely missed. That Elemental Flask nerf for high max res characters is pretty oof. And I'm personally not looking forward to min-maxing my flask setup by crafting the same flask over and over again so that I can corrupt five of them in a row so that maybe I hit a good result. But on the whole, I think these are good changes. What do you think? Let me know your opinion down below. And I can't wait to bring you more Path of Exile news as the teasers come out and as we get the full reveal on March 21st. Also, guys, I quickly want to ask you, I'm currently planning out a lot of faded episodes. We're reaching out to people who've been on the podcast before, but also getting new people on. So if there's someone that you really like to see on the podcast this season around, whether they've been on before or not, let me know in the comments down below, type out the name and I will see whether we can make it happen.